Hello lovelies! I am Mina. Welcome back to my channel and my studio, unless this is your first time here, in which case, welcome to my channel and my studio. It's good to see you, whether you've been here before or not. Let's um, <laughs> jump into this as quickly as we can with as little of a preamble as possible because I got a lot to cover. So this is another video that I am dubbing March Miniature Madness because it's still March and this miniature is driving me to madness. <laughs> It'll be worth it though. It'll be worth it. So I am continuing on with progress on my one to six scale Barbie doll sized doll room, which I've been pointing is because it's right, right here. And I have two weeks at most in which to get a bunch of stuff done. However, March break is a coming and I would like to spend as much of that time as possible with my younglings. Uh, also, they will be home and wanting to, you know, play video games and be generally noisy as children are. So I don't know how much filming I'm going to be able to get done. It's just easier when I don't have to worry about editing that kind of stuff out after the fact. So I might not even be touching this for a week. I don't know. I might end up doing a little bit of work because this is really getting exciting now that things are sort of coming together, in which case there will be voiceover. Mm, but we'll see. And I want to be as realistic as possible. I'm not a miracle worker. I've only got, you know, two weeks max and dry time and stuff. So there are two big features that I want to finish in this, as well as furniture, decorations, accessories, you know, all that kind of stuff. I very highly doubt I'm going to get it all done within this time frame. So just putting it out there, I'm probably going to need at least one more video after this to finish this project. I'm going to do it anyway, but I would really like it if you would like this video to encourage me. So if you are enjoying this Barbie doll room progress, if you would like to see a third, maybe even a fourth video, uh, <laughs> to get to the end and see the final grand reveal, then uh, please pop down below, give this video a like, encourage me, give me the motivation to keep going. I'm going to keep going anyway, but your motivation will really help, especially on those tough days when I just really don't want to because things aren't working out. Because things sometimes don't work out. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to jump in and do as much as I can and that will be this video. Yeah, I think that's everything I need to cover for now. I'm excited. Let's just, let's get to work because yeah, there, there's a lot and I really want to get to it. Okay, do the table. Moving inside now to work on this wall, we start with four strips of foam board that were cut one and a half inches wide and just shy of 13 inches tall. I don't want it to go quite to the top of the room. And I'm going to start by gluing two against the walls. I like to spread out glue with my finger so that it's not too thick in any one area. And I glue this one in here. To recap this wall, because the building process whew, went sideways. So this little box here, so the dimensions the front is six inches by three inches. This part here is about five and a half inches by just shy of 
three inches because I wanted it to be on the inside of this piece so it's just shorter than three and then the two pieces on either side are three inches tall and again just shy of three inches so that they could be on the inside of the front piece. I also cut a hole out and that one right there is about three and three quarter inches by two inches with a little extra shaved off so that it doesn't fit snug because this is going to open and close and I didn't want it to get stuck. After gluing these two strips on the outside, I constructed the box in the middle. Not everything is as square as I would like it to be, so ends and corners and things were lifting, and I secured with a line of hot glue, and then just kind of smushed to create a little bit of a seam there, and hold everything snugly in place. I did that along the back as well, and once I glued this box in, then I secured these two pieces on either side, both to the back wall. Barbie wants to take an even closer look. And the side of the box here. So now I have three separate sections, and then I glued this piece to the top, and it's secured to these as well with a little bit of hot glue in a similar fashion with a little bead and then smoothed out as well as along the top there's hot glue all around there to keep it secured and flat in place I'm not entirely sure why I put the top on I just I think that contains everything maybe helps with the the squareness of the room and I'm hoping it's just gonna pull everything together so, oh, and I also went in and cut some little pieces for the bottom, and those I just measured with the spaces that I had, uh, cut them down, eyeballed, glued them in. And this is going to be a little reading nook with bookshelves. So I'm going to make some shelves, we'll get to that in a little while, and I've got a window already pre-cut. I think this is going to work, but I'm not 100% sure yet, so we'll just put that aside for now. The next thing I want to work on, though, is the seat, and it's also three inches, no, six inches by three inches. It's just some cardstock with foam on top, and this is going to slide right in there and be a little seat. But in order for it to look comfortable, I need to cover this with fabric. And for that, I have a little bit of this, which matches the walls. Going with hot glue here for the instant hold. side down on the back. I'm going to flip this over. Wrap it around and secure. And then I'm going to be folding these in.
and repeat on the other side. In order to get this lined up properly on the bottom of this, I have stuck it in place with some tape. I just put this tape, like, stuck it on my pants a couple times so that it's not totally sticky and hopefully won't rip off the paper. And then I'm going to put some glue. Okay, I put a piece of tape to stick it under here, which helped keep it in place, but made it difficult to pull off. But thankfully there's still, there's a glue impression. So I'll stick that back on top and double check that it works. Okay. That appears to be in the right place. So I'm going to secure this with hot glue as well as tacky glue to hopefully make it super secure. Now to triple check. That glued in place. And decide which corners I want in or out. Try it this way. Okay, that does not look like it's right. I'm gonna try it. Sometimes we have to adjust things after the fact. So I'm gonna cut a little bit down here and we'll try again. Okay, it's not the prettiest underneath anymore, but <laughs> I'm at that point in the process right now where I don't even care. Okay, nope, not that way. Look around. Oh, there we go. We have success. Okay. I think that's gonna work. Excellent. Now, maybe. I'm 
I might need to fiddle with this some more because I need this. Yeah. Okay, what's going on? Okay, too tight, I think, on this side now. We need this to be able to come out in and out of here easily for something else I have planned. Okay, so I got that down smaller. I also went along on all of these rough edges and I put a line of hot glue and then with my silicone finger protector I smeared the line down to act as like a fray stopper because this fabric is prone to fraying, it's a cotton, so hopefully that will help, um, especially with the, the moving around. So let's try this again. Okay, that goes on nicely. That sits really nice and oh, perfect. That's working like a toy chest. Oh, I like it. Okay. Excellent. Then if I need to, I can remove it completely. Oh, much better. Okay. <laughs> After the trouble this wall has been giving me to have this work out finally so well, makes me very happy. This is a scrap that came from cutting out the opening in this wall. I'm going to use this now to make shelves. And basically what I'm going to do is match it up with one side and then mark the other. Now I'm going to cut this out. and test that it fits. It's a little snug, but that's perfect. So now I'm going to mark, because it's a little bit thick or wide or whatever, it's coming out past where the shelves are. So now I mark and cut again. And I'm not using standard measurements or sizes or anything like that. I'm going on the fly with what I have because nothing ended up being like perfectly square. So one side ended up cutting a little bit rough so that's going to go on the inside of the shelf so I've just fixed up the other side and it had to be cut down a little bit and that is perfect so in theory I can now use this piece to cut some more shelves Okay, so as you can see, I've already put a shelf in on either side and I kind of matched it up to where the seat was. So these are pretty big areas and what I'm thinking of doing when I eventually get to the accessories and decorating and that kind of stuff. I'm thinking in at least one of those cubbies, I'm going to put like one of those cube containers. I don't know, fabric or wicker. I'm not sure what yet. Um, like to store a blanket. So I'm thinking of putting like a little cube thing in there that the blanket that the Barbie would use, you know, when imposing her. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking so far. And I have got four shelves out of that scrap piece of foam board that fit on that side. I'm not sure if I'm going to need all four four. So what I'm going to do is I will glue these all in 
just with my trusty tacky glue. And I'm going to use items that eventually will go on the shelves to like space how I want the shelves to be. But I'm not dealing with the decorations and stuff in this video yet. So I'm going to hide that process. And when I come back, I will show you how many shelves I have and explain any other details that I might have missed as I, you know, remember when I put them in. So with the magic of editing, ta -da! the shelves are done. So of the four shelves that I cut for this side, I only used three. I used my tallest item to help figure out the sizing of the shelves. And then over here, I cut three and then decided, no, I want to see if I can put more shelves in. So I cut an extra one and I put four shelves in on this side. I don't know if I love it now because that means that all the big things I have to go in the room are going to have to go on this side. Meanwhile, all the books on this side and that might make it a little more uneven than I would like it to be. But that's what I'm working with for now. It'll be a mess if I decide to pull these out and rearrange them later. But I'll deal with that when the time comes. If it ever comes. Okay, my next big dilemma is the center. I had three ideas for a background window view that I was considering. I loved all three. I couldn't decide. So I got a community tab. Ooh. <laughs> it's the simple things that bring me joy anyway. So I put up a poll on the community tab here and also on my stories over on Instagram with all three options and just put it out there for the people. On my Instagram stories, I got a pretty even split between two of the options. And on the community tab here, I got a pretty even split between two of the options. I love both. So honestly, I think I've come up with a solution so that I can use both. What I've done, first of all, is I traced around my window. So I'm going with this frame. I stuck that in place right about where I want it, which is pretty much in the middle of the space. And then I traced around. So that's what I'm working with. What I'm going to do is cut just outside that line all the way around to make a giant hole, which I'm not going to be able to do on camera because that's a really awkward angle. So I'm going to cut that hole out and then I'll come back and share the next step in my, hopefully this is going to work idea. <laughs> I've cut out where the window used to be. And now just to keep all the edges from getting shredded with, um, you know, use, you'll see why in a little bit. I've cut frames out of duct tape and I'm just going to edge this window. Putting duct tape around the spot that I cut out in that back wall for the window. I don't know if this actually helps. I'm trying to get everything to lay as smooth and tight as I can. I don't want to add any extra bulk to that window. Okay. And I have put the duct tape, it's much thinner on one side than on the other. This is going to be the back, so I don't care what it looks like. This is going to be 
the front and I'm trying to keep the duct tape as much as possible where the frame will be. I don't want it to impede the, the view. Some things have happened since my last recording. I have glued in the window frame on the inside of the wall so it's now permanently in place and it was just glued in with my trusty old tacky glue. Nothing special. It's nice and secure. Then I went ahead and cut out the pictures, the two that I've chosen for that window, and glued them to the back of black cardstock. I chose black cardstock because these are calendar photos. So they have the black lines, and see if there's any light, or with the light colored background, you could see the black markings from the back side. And I found that black cardstock hides those markings very nicely. So now it just looks like a beautiful picture of the outside, or when I put it in the window, it will look like a gorgeous view from the window as opposed to an obvious page cut out from a calendar. What I was hoping to do with this piece, this is the back wall that was cut out behind the window. I went ahead with this stuff, which you can't really see <laughs> because it's completely see-through. It's this shrink plastic. If you grew up in the 80s or 90s, you may or may not be familiar with shrinky dinks. That's basically what this is. I got this from my local Dollarama. I cut out some of that plastic and duct taped it to the piece of the back wall that I cut out. What I was planning on doing was having the pictures interchangeable so they could slide in and out of that back wall. Unfortunately, just putting this picture in, I don't think that's going to be a good idea in the long term. I just see this ending badly. I foresee that, you know, the ends will end up getting all chewed up and gnarly and the picture might just deteriorate. So I went ahead and put some duct tape at the top to seal that bad boy in place. And I have a spare piece of foam board. I don't remember where this came from, but it's, it's a scrap from something. And I've already cut it to be the same size as the back wall. So I'm going to make another photo. I'm going to stick that in place with the clear sheet, duct tape it all in place, because I'm hoping the white duct tape will kind of blend in with the white frame and it won't be totally obvious. So now I have two windows that from the back just slide right in. And they do stick out a little bit. So they're easy to pull back out and switch between the two. And from the inside, they look like that. Like a window with a view and a glass. And I love it. This is the river bend through the hills option, which can easily be switched out. for the mountain waterfall view. Oh, I like it. I have no idea where this means that Barbie lives, but 
she has got a choice view now. Two, in fact, that are interchangeable. <laughs> Time to elevate this window perfection. And for that, I have lights. <laughs> I got this set of fairy lights from Dollar Tree. And the plan is to string them around the window. The light strand has been significantly shortened by just folding the wire around on itself and wrapping in various places between the lights. Um, some of them are spaced out a little bit better than others, but eh, I don't even care. <laughs> Something that I haven't heard mentioned about these lights is, at least for me anyway, working with the wires. So it's, it is wire in between each of these lights. That's what they're strung on. And that can hurt. I don't know if you can see my fingers a little red from all the pinching and twisting. Uh, so that's that's a little painful. Heads up about that. And also, for some reason, working on this wire, trying to get it to twist, I think probably because it twists better if you can keep it still. My hands got so sweaty. It was really hard to keep the wire still and to actually move it and not, like, slip all over the place. So just a heads up if you're going to work on this wire. Um, it hurts and you might get a little sweaty. Also, I found it much easier to shorten it while it was running because when the lights are off, it's much more difficult to see where the actual bulbs are since they're essentially just like as small as a little bead of hot glue and just to see through. So it's much easier to work on this with the light running. Okay, speaking of hot glue, I'm going to use hot glue to attach the lights to the window, which is a awkward angle. I don't think I'm going to be able to film it, but it's pretty straightforward. And yeah, I'll come back when that's done. And it's done! <laughs> oh, like seven second degree burns on one thumb later. Oh, I don't like hot glue. I get people who hate glitter because yes, it is everywhere. You will be finding that stuff decades after you first use it in places that you never expected but hot glue all the strings it just keeps stringing and stringing and stringing and it gets caught on everything and it gah! I will take glitter over hot glue strings any day any day it was totally worth it though check this out okay now that all the lights have been glued around the window I love it. Okay, and now for the big reveal. The reason I cut the hole in the window seat is because I can stick the battery box in there. And then pop the seat on top. So now it looks like a lit window the way a lit window in like human scale would look. Wow, I'm just thrilled. And I love now that this comes off, so it's easily accessible. I can just lift it up to reach in. If I want to turn the lights off, but if I need to get in there to change the battery, I can remove the seat altogether as well, which is so cool. Even Barbie's super excited. It's so cool. Yee! Okay, so this was the big, like, feature that I wanted to put in this room. And now that it's there, I have no clue what I'm going to do with the rest of the space. But that's done. And next we're going to address this hole and finish up I haven't decided still if that's going to be a balcony or a patio, but we're going to finish that up. That's the next big feature, which is both overwhelming and terrifying, 
but that, I'm, I'm gonna tackle it because oh, that that turned out amazing ah! I feel jazzed I feel pumped I can take on the world at least in one sixth scale <laughs> Editing Nina here with an unflattering angle <laughs> just to wrap things up because yeah, this video is turning out to be a beast. We are already over 30 minutes and I'm not even done yet. <laughs> so what you just saw, that's, that's where I'm going to have to cut it for this video because the whole other feature and that outside patio or balcony, whatever it's going to end up being area, not to mention all the decorations and knickknacks and stuff, it's absolutely going to need a whole other video. So yay, bonus content. <laughs> oh, so much for the super easy two video idea that I had. When will I learn miniatures or not? easy at least i don't make them easy <laughs> anyway i i hope you're cool with that i'm gonna be putting out a third video ideally i would like to get it out next week is like woo bonus you know for the month while it's still march miniature madness otherwise we might have to make it maple miniature madness i don't know <laughs> i don't know when exactly it's coming out but there's definitely going to be a third video part of the reason that i'm going to have to do this as well is uh, there's a material that i need that's been causing me oh so much headache i need it for the next big feature and i thought i had what i needed when i found that shrink plastic that i ended up using for the windows It wasn't tall enough. So now I have to find a plastic or plastic-like material that is both tall and wide enough. Again. This has been stumping me and causing me issue ever since I started this project. Yeah, here's hoping I can find something very soon so I can get this video out while it's still relevant to the rest of the content. Oh yeah, and technically... Uh, this is my 100th woo, video on this channel. Well, it's going to be listed as the 100th video. There are actually some videos that I nerfed a while ago with the whole the kids content scare. I had a bunch of like toy unboxings and I got rid of those because I didn't want to risk getting penalized. But then I also decided eh, that's, that's not really the kind of stuff I want to do. Now that I feel comfortable being on camera, I don't need to hide behind toy unboxings with just my hands. And yeah, so I decided I, I outgrew that. And I don't know when exactly my 100th video would have been if those videos had stayed. But since they're gone, technically, this is it. Not much of a celebration. Maybe we'll have a little party in the next video to celebrate in the 101st. Um... When this whole room and headache is done and we can move on to something else. That's the video. I hope you liked it. Thanks so much for checking out this video, for hanging out with me, um, coming along on my journey if, you know, you're here for the long haul. Especially if you stayed to this point of the video. Thank you for listening to me talk. I appreciate it. <laughs> More than you know. <laughs> I am so lonely. <sighs> anyway, that's why I talk. This is my outlet. I don't I don't have grown-ups in my real life that I can talk to on a regular basis. You're it. <laughs> okay, now <laughs> now I'm really coming across as unhinged. Mm, thank you, Barbie doll room. You did this to me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go make a cup of tea and finish this video and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay fabulous. I hope you stay sane. Or at least as sane as you can. <laughs> Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye! Okay, bye! Peace out. See you later.